welcome back in this video we're gonna be creating our first pipeline on azure devops this is going to be a ci continuous integration pipeline so in azure uh, devops you can set up ci for any of your code written in any language for any environment what does that mean means you can suppose you are one of the developer who has built an application maybe a node dot node.js uh, .NET, Java, Python, Go. It doesn't matter whichever language you've written your code into. You can build and perform CI using your Azure DevOps pipeline. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use uh, one of the code repo, which is which contains infrastructure code. Terraform is used to build infrastructure. And that's what we're going to be using it for creating our pipeline. So let's get started. Mm, we've already got our code dread project and if you go right over here uh, on the pipeline section over here click on the pipeline i would see that uh, you've, it has got multiple options like pipeline and then you've got environments release library task group you know, deployment groups in this video we're going to be talking about what is pipeline pipeline is dedicated featured in azure devops to perform to initiate your continuous integration in azure devops for any of your application written in any language so let's get started and start creating our first pipeline so you hit on the create pipeline all right the first thing first you kind of select where your source code is sitting and whether you want to so there are two types of uh, azure devops pipeline you can create from one is the YAML, which is the standard across majority of the pipeline, be it GitLab or GitHub. Um, Azure DevOps also supports YAML, where you can define the steps for your pipeline, or you can use the classic editor. For this video, we're going to use the classic editor, and the next one, we're going to start off with the YAML pipeline as well. Don't worry about it. The source code, where uh, you're going to select the, the, the repo or the Git repo where you're the source code is actually setting into in our case it is azure repos you can use the github or bitbucket or gitlab whatever is deemed appropriate then you're going to select the team project which is the same as uh, code red and then the repos i have only one repo at the moment uh, or rather two repo i'm going to select the azure devops one and the branch branch is the one wherein you want the continuous integration to be deployed so whenever you push any code onto the master the continuous integration would be triggered for that particular branch only not for any other branches you might be working so you might have test or release branches you have and you don't want your continuous integration to be triggered for those branches you can use uh, kind of any exclude them from right up from here as soon as you click on continue see that azure devops gives you multiple tasks these tasks are dedicated for your project let's suppose you're using a dotnet project you have a dotnet task uh, let's suppose you were using a java project you have a maven task as well maybe python maybe ant or any of the azure devops as well you've got a bunch of template right available over here we're going to select an empty one as soon as you select the empty one you see that it starts with your name of your pipeline which is by default code red continuous integration the next one the agent pool agent pool lets you define where your code you want your code to be running on to for any of the devops ci cd tool be it jenkins uh, octopus team city gitlab or github there has to be a built agent or a runner wherein your code would be running your code needs to run on a certain machine maybe if you if it's a ios application maybe uh maybe a mac os system if it is an apache uh, application or a linux application or it could be anything uh, you need a linux box maybe a dotnet application you need a windows server to build your code in our case we're going to select uh, ubuntu or rather select the latest one you can have your custom as well whenever you you get started with azure devops azure devops gives you by default build agents so these build agents are which you see it comes by default uh, with azure devops pipeline you don't need to set up anything however you could set up as well your own custom build agents and yeah that's 
that's about it and then you kind of select the agent job then if you were to add many tasks let's suppose you're building a dotnet application you could use a dotnet task as well these tasks gives you a flexibility and option to perform certain tasks now these tasks could be dedicated for your project uh, since our project is a terraform so we're going to use a terraform task you could see that azure gives you many tasks build you have your build task which could be uh, for your and for dotnet or android application you've got docker task as well docker compose if you're building a go application you've got a go task as well and if you're building a java you've got a maven task if it's a dotnet application you've got a ms build as well if you're working on uh, android or ios application you've got xamarin over xcode as well specifically for your ios application uh, you've got utility task as well which means running you if you wanted to run a bash script using azure devops you could do that as well we're going to see how you can do that and then you've got package and deploy task as well uh, it not only gives you azure specific task but some other task as well like for uh, octopus deploy and uh, for kubernetes task as well it gives you task for terraform and that's what we are going to use so we in case you don't find anything right over here you could go to marketplace and build your own task as well developer like us you has built these uh, custom tasks and deployed and kind of deployed into marketplace so that it is available for us to use so for our case we're going to use a terraform task the first one is terraform installer you click on add and you want to make sure that it installed terraform 12.26 and then it on the control option you see enabled or continue an error enable make sure that your task is enabled if you just unselected it, it's going to make sure that this task doesn't run however stays in the pipeline i'm going to go back and enable it again then continue an error this means that even if this task fails you want to make sure that pipeline kind of continues and skip it to the next one and then you've got certain condition right over here when you want the task to be uh, to be skipped to the next one even if the pre previous task has failed you want it to be skipped to the next one and uh, a lot of other options all right so next next one we do is hit on the plus sign again and add few more tasks it's going to be terraform for azure so you select um, the provider which you want to run Terraform for. In our case, it's going to be Azure RM, and then the default working directory, which is you see that it has by default selected it for you. Azure DevOps comes with many of the by default predefined parameters. These parameters or variables kind of defines the variable for you. System dot default working directory means the default directory for your build agents. And that's what you should be remembering nothing more then you've got your azure subscription to select i'm going to select this one and kind of refresh authorize it and then it's going to list down all the resource group i have i have only one resource group so i'm going to select that and go to azure storage account and then select the container as well i'm going to go to the azure portal and select the key from the storage account Oops, and go to the key right over here and if you click on the control option you will see the same option which we discussed in our last task I'm gonna use another one and use a terraform task again this is going to be a validate one and then a one more terraform and add this is going to be a plan I'm going to copy this which I am going to need into the, my next task I'm going to select the subscription the last task is the publish artifactory means when whatever Azure DevOps has built for us these tasks I wanted to publish it as an artifact or publish it as a as a as a working directory so that the continuous delivery pipeline can consume it I'm gonna make sure that it is being published to the same path you could use this path as well however I just wanted to show you that how we can use 
different path as well. This is going to be system dot default working directory under the name of a drop folder. All right, looks okay. You would also notice that it's going to give us a YAML. So YAML kind of is defined the snippet that so you could use a long YAML file, which we're going to do in our upcoming video and define these tasks as well. Azure DevOps recommends us to use YAML pipeline so that because majority of the features, the new features are first launched for YAML and then for the classic editor view. All right, that's pretty much all. I'm going to hit on save and queue. Make sure that the enable system diagnostic is kind of checked on so that we can see a debugging log and then we write a comment my first CI pipeline I'm going to give a check that my agent pipeline is right which is Ubuntu and then I'm running the CI for my master pipeline if you had any variables you could use the variable right over here as well which we're going to do it in our next video and then we got demands as well demands are specific for your application if before running your dotnet application maybe you wanted to make sure that ms build is right there and then and there so you could use that demand option as well i'm going to hit on save and run and it's going to start the pipeline for us so if we go right over here pipeline you would see that it has started to run the pipeline and you see that the it has started to initiate the job for us and it's one by one it's going to run all the tasks the first one was installing the terraform version which it has done now install the terraform version the second one was terraform init it has done the initialization then terraform plan and then it's dropped the folder to a working directory so you would see that it's dropping the folder to a working directory under the name of drop. If you go right over here, you see that it has dropped the folder under the drop. All right, so your task is now successful. You would see that all the task has green sign, green right, which means that the task is now successful. Uh, if you go to the pipeline you would see that it was successful and the duration of the task was 32 seconds this gives you a build number and it has a warning however it, it didn't have any um, error but it had one warning as well all right so if you go to the artifactory it gives you a documentation what the artifactory is all about however if you go to our pipeline right over here you see that the pipeline was successful it was manually triggered for the master branch uh, you're not gonna you would notice that this trigger this pipeline was triggered manually because this was run for the first time however you wanted to make sure that whenever you push anything onto your code repo it should automatically run the pipeline for you so what you're gonna do is what you're gonna do is you are going to enable a trigger if you go to the triggers and enable continuous integration and you kind of select which branch you want the continuous integration to be selected for so whenever you push anything on the master branch for the repo uh, for the current repo it's gonna trigger a continuous integration so what I'm gonna do is I am going to go to triggers enable this and hit on save All right, so now if I go to my repo and make any changes, it's it is going to make sure that it's going to trigger the pipeline. So if I hit edit and just remove the URL right from here and just click on commit, checking continuous integration. the branch master you you will notice that you could link a work job right from here as well you could assign let's suppose you're working on documentation placeholder you could assign this particular commit 
with your user story as well if you hit on commit and if you come to your pipeline you would see that it has started to started to run the pipeline for you automatically you didn't have to go and manually do it so you see that the pipeline has been ready for you has been started to trigger now it's gonna run all the pipeline and make sure that it's gonna run all the task beneath the pipeline so I've already got the project cloned for me uh, rather I would clone it in front of you so if I go to the repo and click on clone go to SSH and do a get clone you would notice that if you go to your pipeline if you hit click on your pipeline and if you click on the right three dots right over here you see something called as status badge so if you just use the sample markdown status and what it's gonna do, do is it is going to give you a status of your pipeline onto your repo so now if you go to the repo and go to the readme it hasn't got any status whether it was the build was successful or not so what you can do is um, it's gonna we're gonna use that particular sample markdown and paste it onto our read.md all right so the repo has been cloned now if I get into the repo and start making some changes with the readme just open my readme and paste in the badge which I selected from my pipeline select the pipeline go to the status badge copy the sample markdown and paste it right over here if I am going to push it get add get commit hyphen M one of the trick is you can kind of map your commit with the work item let's suppose you're working on the code of the boards and select one of the work item we've created let's suppose you created for you you're writing this code to for this particular story for creating servers and if you just use the story number which was 10 and come back right over here the story number is 10 and uh, if you just come over here in the commit type in hash and then 10 and then the commit message um, first commit for the story via pipeline hit enter git push and it's gonna push the changes if you come back over here you will see that it has linked your commit right over here this commit which was which was uh, pushed a couple of seconds back if you go to the in progress button right over here it has started to build your code as well automatically and it's gonna run all the tasks for you now all right so it's gonna run the task and make sure that the artifacts are available to be consumed by the continuous delivery pipeline that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.